rats, rabbits, mice, and things that I don't even know what they are. You name it, they like to come in here and treat my plot like some sort of eat all you want buffet, which I'm sure is very nice for them, but it's not so great for me. And today, today is the day. No more, I'm done with it, finished, I've had enough. This fence over here, which is the source of the problem. I should have fixed it ages ago. I've patched it up from time to time. We've spent ages trying to fix this fence all the way around the plot. We had rabbits getting in. And the onions are going really well. And then one night, something got in. So we can fix the fence at the bottom of the plot that's been knackered for ages. Where I've now got this net. So that's the new blueberry plants that we had. And they're under this net now. Because I'll, I'll show you down the plot a little bit. I found a hole in the fence. But all the way along here, this is all getting fixed today. I've got the day off work. I've got all my stuff ready. I've got everything I need. I'm coming up here and I'm going to do a proper job. Because over the last few years, I might have mentioned once or twice, there's been issues with the fence. And throughout that time, I've never really fixed it properly. I've had a go, little bits and pieces here and there, and I've patched it up in every place you could imagine. Here, 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 and here. So let's have a little wander just around the outside of the plot here. Let's go and have a look at this this fence and let's see exactly what's wrong with it. Now there's a there's a couple of things that, that sort of stand out to me that, that causes the problems around here. And we'll just pop down here and around the corner. So let's have a look along the fence line here at what exactly I think is wrong. And this bit here is a prime example. So you can see here, I can actually get my foot underneath there. And there's holes under the fence like that all the way along. And I've used bricks and whatever else I've got lying around to block up the holes, but that's just, it's just not sustainable anymore. There's too many holes. And I think one of the problems is the garden center, the only allotments along here, come along and they trim all the grass line at the edge of the plots. And they use one of these big petrol driven strimmers. And I'm sure 99.9% .9 of the time, it's them catching the bottom of the chicken wire that's causing those holes to appear. Cause they don't just appear magically by themselves. We've got a broken fence post. You can, you can see it here, it's leaning. It's leaning over, I don't know whether a car's hit it, whether it's been the wind or whatever, it's pretty old, that fence post. To be honest, it's probably rotten where it goes into the ground at the bottom there. And the other problem is at some point over, over the sort of the past few years, when this has been repaired or fixed or whatever, you can see that there's two layers of chicken wire here. And what it's created is a gap in between the two layers of fence where grass and weeds and all sorts of stuff are going to grow, which is a bit of a pain because look all the way along here, you can see it happens all the way along here. It's got the dead weeds in between the two layers of chicken wire. We've even got brambles coming through over there. So what's the plan for today? Well, first of all, we're going to strip off all this chicken wire. We're going to go all the way down to the corner there because this is the main bit. This is the worst bit where the problems are. So we're going to get stripped back all the way along here. I have a new fence post. We are definitely going to replace that because, you know, you could say it's a little bit broken, just a little bit. And then the big difference that I'm going to do today is I'm going to trench the new chicken wire fence. So the chicken wire is probably going to go down into the ground at least a shovel's length. So probably what's that, about 10 inches thereabouts, give or take an inch or two, all the way down into the ground. And that'll stop things being able to tunnel underneath it or get through the bottom of it. Any of those gaps that you see there, we're going to get them sorted. And that is essentially where I'm trying to get to. So let's chitter chatter, let's faffing about, let's get cracking. Well, that's the first part done. You can see I can walk through the fence. There's no chicken wire left here anymore. So there's no going back because it's all in a big tangled heap behind me. Now, it hasn't quite been as straightforward as I hoped. I managed to get it off. Chicken wire is a, like I say, it, it's a pain to work with. It gets tangled and caught up and all sorts of stuff. One thing I am going to have to do if I find it is retrieve this sort of green wire sort of thing that runs all the way along, along the top of the fence, along the top of the chicken wire. Other problem we've got and let, let me just come down here. Hopefully you can see that. Now this happened, I, I was worried. Now I was up here yesterday doing a bit of prep and I was worried this was gonna happen. And let me show you what we've got here. Yes, we have got one of the fence posts and you can see there where it's been sort of in the ground. This has gone on the ground and it's just 
it's obviously rotted to the bit that's been underground and it's just snapped off there. And to top it all off, I thought several times yesterday about going to b and and getting another fence post for that exact reason. Did I do it? No, I didn't. So I have only one brand new fence post to use and you can see by the height of it, it's a decent height, but even if I cut it there, but I've got a bit to bury in the ground. So I'm probably gonna have to cut it here. You can see there's only a tiny little bit left on the top there. So that's nowhere near enough for that. What I really don't wanna do is be faffing on, getting in the car, driving 15, 20 minutes that way, going to b and getting some stuff, coming back another 15, 20 minutes. There's an hour gone, isn't it, of doing this job. So I'm gonna improvise. What I did find was two similar bits of wood. You can see there, there's two of them that I've joined together. So in the, I've shown you this before and I always say it's a bit messy, the sort of the dumping area that's at the back of the lot. And I just dump stuff there, stuff that I've used, off cuts of wood, things that have been built and then taken apart. There's all sorts of stuff over there. This is it. This is the reason why I've got that area over there. I found these two lengths of wood. No, it's not a fence post. Is it going to do the job? Absolutely. I've got an old rusty hammer in the polytunnel. I found some nails. Nails from... I think it was when I built the polytunnel actually, the nails that you used to build all the wooden door frames and things like that around about. So I had some spare nails, rusty old hammer, two bits of spare wood, job done. I'm taking a break and I'm taking a break because I'm getting a bit annoyed. And there's more, there's more bad words being said in probably the last half an hour that would get me banned from YouTube in an instant if I filmed them. And there's a, there's a, I'm probably honestly, I'm out of breath, I'm hot. I'm sweaty. I'll probably look like a tomato at the moment. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm annoyed. Let me, let me show you what I'm annoyed at. So there's two things. One, these fence posts are massively, massively, massively out of alignment. And you can see my big, long, bendy trench that I've dug a long year to try and line them up. The second thing is stones. Look at all the stones I've been digging up. They are everywhere. They are all along here. And I kid you not, near enough, any time, I've put, I can even see, even see them there. Every time I have put my shovel anywhere in here to dig this trench, I've hit a stone and you've got to go down. I've got to get my fingers in. I've got to dig them out. So needless to say, I'm not best pleased. I'm a bit annoyed. I'm taking, I'm taking 10 minutes. I'm going to have a bag of prawn cocktail crisps and a cup of tea, give myself some energy to come back on here and crack on with the rest of this trench. So at last, we're making progress. Powered on by crisps and tea, we need to put the new fence posts in. We've got a bodged together one somewhere over there, wherever I've put it. And we've got this one, the new one. And I need to cut it. And there's only, there's only one tool for the job. And let me show you this. Somebody emailed me and they said, would you like a mini chainsaw? Now, there's only really one answer to that question, isn't there? And they sent me this. This is a sea sail mini chainsaw. And I could use any saw, really. I should probably use just a hand saw to saw this. But no, I'm going to use a mini chainsaw. And it comes like this. Like it's got all this stuff and it's got the instructions. We'll pop that over there. It's got gloves. It's got safety goggles. And it's got this. It's got the chainsaw. And it runs on a battery. Let me get this. And honestly, I've, I've never used a chainsaw before. I don't own a chainsaw. This is my first time using a chainsaw. That goes in, that comes off. Here we go, right? Let's give it a quick test. Honestly, they sent me this, this got delivered last week and I've been waiting to try this out for ages. So let's give it a blast. So I've marked up this wood here. I'm just leaning on the side of the raised bed. Let's pop it on. Quick and as easy as that. That would have taken me much longer with the hand saws. Right, cut the size, post going in. I would like to use some post crete here, but we're not like to use any sort of concrete or anything on the site. So it's just going in the hole and it's going to rely on my sheer sort of brute force to get the post in. And as soon as I get all this, it looks a bit wobbly now, but that's because it's not compressed. But as soon as I start compressing down this earth, this post is going to be pretty much solid in there. And there's more to come in in here. I sort of chuck some stones in there as well, you know, do a proper job. Get it in there and I will. So we're making progress. A couple of things I've done. One is this green sort of galvanised wire here is fed all the way along the chicken wire right at the top there. That's really important. So when I spread the chicken wire out, 
to keep the fence nice and tight, keep it upright, doesn't stop it, sort of stops it like bunching up. That'll go along there, right along the hook. The other thing we've done is I've put the first stapler in. I'm using a staple gun to attach the chicken wire to the fence post. Honestly, I bought this years ago and I've been, it's been absolutely invaluable. It is a brilliant piece of kit. It was a couple of quid off Amazon and I would be lost without it. You know when you've got one of those tools at the allotment that you just use again and again and again and again for different stuff. This is it, the staple gun. It's blooming marvellous. Slowly but surely making progress. Let me show you along here so you can see we've got the new new fence in there. I don't know how well it'll show up on the camera, but that's all been trenched in there. I've not done this bit yet, just so you can see down in the trench to see how it looks. So you can see the, the sort of chicken wire almost coils up all the way along the bottom so if even any any rabbits come along and they start digging in if they start digging down they're just going to be met with this sort of coiled up bit of chicken wire at the bottom there we're nearly there the next time you see me this will all be finished i'll be all the way up to the fence post and we'll be done so i'll be back with you in an amount of time when it's done and i'll show you how it's looking and at last i'm done what was meant to be a nice easy job turned out to be a bit of a, a bit of a pain with snapped fence posts and stones, more stones than I've ever seen in my life. But I'm done. I'm done. Let's let's have a look along the along the fence line, see if you can see it there. Look, it looks pretty good. Apart from that one, that one fence post, the old one that I didn't put in that's out of alignment. It's not quite straight, but however, however, we'll we'll live with it. We're not gonna lose any sleep over it. So I'll show you this. And I did that bit on Sunday over the far side and I'll go and show you that as well. Let me, let me spin you around and we'll have a look at the work that's been done. So we'll just have a wander along and it all looks, it does all look a bit messy, but feel free to admire all the stones that are on the other side. And here's the, one of the new fence posts that we put in and look, I've, I've even put some deck and stain on the top there from where, uh, where it was cut with a chainsaw. So all the way along, all the way along, it's not looking too bad. It's a little bit of a bow right at the very end here. I must admit, I was getting a bit tired, a bit fed up at the end here. And this this needs a new fence post right in the corner here as well. It's sort of leaning over. So I suspect when I fix that, when I've got another post, that'll pull that fence up and it'll look absolutely spot on. And let's just cruise down here and have a look. This is the bit that I did on Sunday there. Again, you can probably see where the trench has been dug all the way along the side there. Coming all the way along here, right up to the corner of my neighbor's shed. And that is me done. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now folks.